there's that crew again. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. Here in the lab, we're going to make a plastic called Bakelite. Bakelite was one of the first plastics that became widespread. And it was made about 100 years ago for the first time by a guy called Bakeland. Bakeland was spelt in a quite complicated way with A's and E's, but the material he invented quite soon became much more simply called Bakelite. And it became very popular when people were making telephones and um, toys and all kinds of things. If you remember, we didn't have telephones in our pockets. There was a telephone in a place of honour, usually in the hall of a house. The telephone was made out of Bakelite. And because it was brittle, if you dropped the telephone, it broke. Have you ever owned any Bakelite products? Not that I know of. No. I think it might be slightly before my time. Particularly the radios, which in those days occupied the sort of place that TVs occupy now. People used to sit around the radio to hear the news. And again, they had Bakelite cases. So we're going to make it. It's actually a very easy synthesis. It's a reaction between phenol and formaldehyde. Darren is doing the chemical part of making Bakelite. To make real Bakelite, you have to add so-called wood flour, which is a powder made from wood, particularly the part of wood called lignin, which is what gives wood its strength. So we have in here, if you can see in our uh, yep. reaction vessel, we have the phenol already, kind of a uh, crystalline kind of material. And we have here some formaldehyde, so I'm just going to add this in. What's that dial you doing? Just turn the heat up a little bit. And I'm going to put in some acetic acid. All right. <laughs> we're going to have this, we're going to be able to do this like bullet time, 360. <laughs> have you ever had this many cameras at once? No, no. We've got me, we've got the GoPro, we've got the high speed, and we've got all of those. We're going to leave this for a while just so we have a nice intimate mixture between the phenol and the uh, germaldehyde. And, and th that'll hit, sit there happily and nothing will happen until we add this, which is concentrated hydrochloric acid. If you heated it up, it was then sufficiently flexible that you could push it into a mould and mould all sorts of objects, ashtrays, people used to smoke a lot then, and particularly knobs for putting on all sorts of electrical equipment, you know, the on-off switches, things like that. So usually, when we do this, nothing happens until we... Uh get to the last couple of mils. I am adding the acid quite slowly. I think we might be seeing some pink come in. Here we go. We've made a plastic. What Darren is making is called a phenol formaldehyde resin. Quite heavy. Um, it's, it's, it's tough. It is, um, it's quite a tough material actually. I've got a rather crude model down here of phenol. This is a benzene ring with five hydrogens and this is an oxygen atom with another hydrogen on here. Did and you make that? I, I, I put this on and it squeaks, but that's not part of the scientific explanation. Formaldehyde consists of carbon and oxygen and two hydrogens. But in the chemical reaction, the oxygen goes away. And so in the chemical reaction, which is surprisingly violent and which requires a catalyst, you can either use a base, that's an alkali or an acid. In Darren's case, he used hydrochloric acid, 
because he's really fond of hydrochloric acid. He used it to dissolve a cheeseburger. But he um, used this acid, which makes the formaldehyde attack the phenol in this position or that position. These are called the ortho positions or the position here, para. And so essentially, it joins a whole series of these rings together. One formaldehyde goes in here, then you get another ring, and so you get a complicated network of these phenol molecules joined by CH2 groups. And if you look at the chemical structure written down, it quickly looks like my hair. Okay, so we're going to give this another go, and um, the difference this time is we're going to apply a bit more heat and see if there's any difference. Oh, here's that. Here's that crew again. <laughs> Ready? What was discovered by Bakeland was that this mixture could be molded and it led to a large number of different objects being made. Nowadays, they're much better plastics and so Bakelite is not used very much. Though there are a whole group of people who collect Bakelite objects for nostalgia's sake. Hey! Hey! Well, we're, we're a bit disappointed, actually, because um, it's not as good as yesterday's. Yesterday's we coated the inside of the fume hood with Bakelite and um, we don't really know why it's different yet so we'll have to think about that one. We, we do have footage from yesterday's so maybe we'll look at the footage again and see but if... You it, filmed that didn't you? We filmed that yeah. So, uh, so basically the, you don't need me. The, the, the quality may not be as good. <laughs> yeah, <it> happened. <laughs> 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 no, this thing is, doesn't need a stirrer. <laughs> so, how do we avoid that? 